Good morning. Today we are going to read this book called Tsunamis. Look at that back cover, all of that destruction. Tsunamis. And you can see the big wave coming over that wall. Here's the table of contents. So we're going to read about the Indian Ocean tsunami and then the history, the causes, the areas at risk, warning systems, how to survive a tsunami, and then the conclusion. So the first one we're going to read is the Indian Ocean Tsunami. On December 26, 2004, a powerful earthquake shook the ocean floor near the coast of Sumatra, Indonesia. People in nearby villages felt the earth shake. They didn't know that within minutes, a massive wave known as a tsunami would flood their homes. The giant wall of mo moving water washed away entire towns. Within hours, the waves have pounded thousands of miles of coast in Indonesia, India, Asia, or I'm sorry, India, Africa, Thailand, Bangladesh, Malaysia, Maldives, Myanmar, and Singapore, among others. So look, here's the destruction from that 2004 tsunami. And here's where it was in the world. People around the world were stunned each day as the reported death toll increased from 20,000 to 100,000 to 226,000. We will probably never know how many people died because many bodies were buried by the mud and debris or washed out to sea. Scientists think that the death toll would have been lower if more people had known about the danger of tsunamis and how to escape them. So here's that city before the tsunami, and here it is after the tsunami. Look how devastating that is. Tsunami survivor stories. Amid the stories of loss were amazing stories of survival. One man from Indonesia was washed out to sea by the tsunami, but he was able to crawl onto the wooden raft. So it's right here. Um, he survived by eating coconuts and drinking rainwater. A ship rescued him after two weeks at sea. Some people outran the water or were washed inland by the wave. Others survived by hanging onto trees or by climbing to the tops of strong buildings. The people who headed for higher ground as soon as they felt the earthquake were most likely to survive. Experts say moving to higher ground or inland are the only true safe places to go when a tsunami hits. So there's that guy who was on this raft for two weeks. It's a long time. History of tsunami. The word tsunami is Japanese and it means harbor wave. It originated with Japanese fishermen who would return to port to find their towns destroyed by unusually large ocean waves that they haven't, hadn't even noticed while out at sea. Tsunamis can be devastating when they occur. Fortunately, they are very rare. There are usually six major tsunamis every 100 years worldwide. In 1883 in Indonesia, the volcano uh, Krakatoa exploded and caused a tsunami that killed 36,000 people. In 1958, a landslide in Alaska splashed into Latua Bay, creating a wave of 1,720 feet high. An earthquake off the coast of Chile caused a tsunami in, in 1960, devastating parts of South America, Hawaii, and Japan. Here's that volcano that erupted and caused the tsunami. Causes of tsunamis. Earthquakes on the ocean floor cause most tsunamis. Underwater landslides, volcanic explosions, and meteor impacts also cause tsunamis. Not every earthquake in or near the ocean causes a tsunami. It, it depends on the strength of the earthquake and the type of movement that occurs in Earth's crust. An earthquake has to be at least 6.75 on the Richter scale to result in a tsunami. The Indian Ocean tsunami in of 2004 was caused by a mega earthquake with a magnitude of 9.0. How strong is it? The force of an earthquake is described with the Richter scale. People do not feel a 2.0 earthquake at all. Seismographs all around the world can measure a 4.5 quake. With each step up the Richter scale, force increases rap rapidly. 
A magnitude 6.0 earthquake has 10 times the power of a 5.0 earthquake. So when you hear about a magnitude 7, 8, or 9 quake, remember each unit is actually 10 times the strength of the unit before. So this is like a, one of the machines they use to measure the Richter scale. When they feel the earthquake, like this little arm goes up and down. And so the more it's shaking, the higher those, um, those bars will be. And so that's how they can measure how big the earthquake was. Tsunamis are sometimes called tidal waves because they rush in like a high tide. But in truth, they have nothing to do with tides. Tsunamis are also different from normal surface waves caused by wind. Surface waves tend to roll onto shore in a circular motion. So like, see it showing here surface waves. See how they're kind of rolling in to close together. A tsunami wave is one big wave and it's just kind of all rushing over at once. Earthquakes occur when sections of Earth's crust suddenly slide against each other along a fault. If an up and down shift occurs on the sea floor, all the water on the sea floor moves too, creating an enormous bulge of water, a tsunami. So that's like over here. It's a big bulge of water. The tsunami moves almost invisibly in the open ocean because it is broad and very low compared to surface waves. So like here it's showing the plates are moving, there's a bubble of water, it moves, it moves, and then when it gets shallower, it's spreading away from the fault line. It says a tsunami can move as fast as a jet plane at speeds of 200 to 500 miles per hour. Tsunamis retain their strength as they spread out over thousands of miles of open ocean, like ripples in a pond. They can travel from one side of the Pacific Ocean to the other in less than a day. So like, here's how the ripples are going out from where it started. When the wave runs into the shallow shoreline, it grows much higher and it slows down. First, the sea recedes as the wave approaches. Next, the seafloor and past the sh normal shoreline and gushes inland, sometimes far up the rivers and streams that open to the ocean. Tsunami waves often come in sets. Observers report the first wave of the Indian Ocean tsunami was smaller than the second wave. Some people survived the first wave but did not keep running and were overwhelmed by the larger second wave. And this is how a tsunami hits the floor. It's moving, it gets higher, it moves faster, and then it's going on the shore. Areas at risk for tsunamis. Low-lying coastlines and areas where earthquakes are common are most at risk for tsunamis. The Ring of Fire is a line of volcanoes stretching around the entire Pacific Ocean. Where there are volcanoes, frequent earthquakes occur with the movement of Earth's crust. Indonesia is also an area where Earth's crust moves often. Although we can't predict the exact time or location of an earthquake, we can estimate when an area is overdue for one. So here's all the areas that are most at risk. It's called the Ring of Fire. There is no practical way to protect property from tsunami devastation, but with early warning, we can save lives. When an earthquake occurs at sea, there is usually some time before the resulting tsunami reaches land. Unfortunately for the people of Banda Aceh, Indonesia, there were only a few minutes between the quake and the wave. It took about three or four hours for the tsunami to reach India and Sri Lanka. This would have been enough time to radio a message ahead. Government and scientists are working to build warning systems for future tsunamis around the world. On the Pacific coast of the United States, a tsunami warning system is in place. Seismographs all along the Pacific coast detect earthquakes. A tsunami warning is issued anytime there's an earthquake of 6.8 in Alaska, or 7.5 in Western United States. Buoys that are anchored at sea can detect a tsunami's wave speed and direction and radio this information back to land. Radio messages and loud sirens warn people in seaside communities that a tsunami is coming. Signs along the highway label areas at risk and suggest evacuation routes. How to survive a tsunami. 
People who live in areas at risk for tsunami should keep these rules in mind. Find out what the safe evacuation routes are and develop a family emergency plan. Follow the evacuation directions if a tsunami warning is issued. Don't waste time saving property. Depending on the earthquake location, you may have hours or only minutes to leave. If an earthquake occurs, head immediately to higher ground. Make sure everyone in the house knows to leave. Don't wait for evidence of an approaching tsunami. Outrunning a tsunami that, is always, that has already arrived should be a last resort. Flee on foot. Traffic jams can quickly form, causing waste of precious minutes. Don't stay in small buildings close to the coast. Most tsunamis cannot withstand the force of a tsunami. Stay away from rivers near the coast. Tsunamis can wash far inland along river channels. Stay in a safe location until the authorities have given an all-clear message. Remember, the first may wave may not be the biggest or the last. Conclusion. Earthquakes and tsunamis are scary reminders of the power of nature. We can't prevent these events from happening, but we can prepare for them. Knowing what to do and getting an early warning can save lives.